Okay. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to our Series 63 webinar that will guide you on a path to help you learn how to effectively study and use our material to the maximum. We will discuss common mistakes made during the exam and give you test-taking tips that will drive your success. I am Dana Patkowski, Director of Strategic Sales and Training. I've been assisting students to achieve success with their financial training for over 20 years. During this webinar, we invite you to ask questions through the chat tool, and we will answer as many of them as time allows after the presentation. I would like to introduce you to my colleague, Adam James. Adam is a securities instructor teaching hundreds of students the Series 6, 7, 65, and 66. Additionally, he writes a curriculum for the Series 79 and 99 examinations. In the industry, Adam has touched most parts for broker-dealers operations and has the Series 4, 7, 24, 27, 55, 63, 79, and 87 licenses. Adam, will you now guide us to Kaplan's best practices for taking the Series 63 exam? Thanks, Dana. I'd like to give my own personal welcome to everyone coming out this morning, giving that sign that you're taking your studies seriously by beginning them off right, by learning these best practices on how you can kickstart your study efforts for the Series 63. As way of introduction, I want to just reference why is it that I am an instructor for Kaplan Financial? The reason why is because I'm a Kaplan success story. As Dana mentioned, I've passed seven of these qualification exams my first time. Now, I don't say that for any boasting or self-aggrandizement. I say that because I was able to use this, these study materials and I was able to structure my studies to their fullest using these best practices we're going to talk about today. I'm not alone in this. Over one and a half million other students have passed their qualification exams doing the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and talk about how you can apply these practices to your studies for the Series 63. Before we get into that, though, I want to talk about the 63 just for a moment. What is it and why do we need to take it? Well, the Series 63 is, allows you to solicit the purchase or sales of securities within a state. So while you may have other regulatory exams to take, for example, the Series 6 or the Series 7, which are administered by FINRA and required by FINRA, the Series 63 is going to be required by the states for you to be registered in them. Now, some of the statistics for the exam. It is a 65 multiple choice question test. So there's going to be four choices for every question, A, B, C, and D. Where, as we go through, we'll even talk about some of the ways you may be able to narrow down some of those choices. The testing time for this is one hour and 15 minutes. This is a timed exam. However, most students that I have talked to, the vast majority, have said that time is not a critical factor on their test. They have time to be able to carefully think about each question. The passing rate for this test is 72% or above. Well, instead of thinking about it, at 70, I have to get 72% of every of the test right, I like to think about it the other way around. You can still get 28% of this test wrong. That's more than one quarter of, every que of all the questions wrong and still come out with a passing score. Take a bit of comfort in that, that there is some room for mistakes. However, we're trying to make sure that you have all the materials and you're ready to pass this test. Now, what are some of the areas that students have special difficulty with that uh, you may want to spend a few extra hours studying. Well, the first one is Unit 1, Regulation of Persons. Okay, going through and understanding what is uh, the regulations that are pertaining to you. Unit 4, Ethical Practices and Fiduciary Obligations are also a major issue on the Series 63, where you want to make sure that you have the, these materials covered well as you're going through your studies. Make sure to uh, pay special attention, not exclusive, but you want to spend a few extra minutes or hours working through these sections. As you go through, you also want to make sure you pay attention to the test topic alerts discussed in the units you're going to see in our LEM, the License Exam Manual. And we'll talk a little more about that 
in just a few minutes. Now that we know what the 63 is, let's talk about how can you best prepare for the 63. What are some of these uh, test taking tips or study practices that you should take? Well, I see your study program as being broken down into three sections. The first and foundational part is to read. Read the entire LEM or license exam manual. This is going to give you all the foundational information you need for your studies, for everything that comes thereafter. The second part of your study solution needs to be to watch or interact with an instructor. You can do this through uh, a live class. You can watch an instructor with an online class. You can email instructors through the instructor link email access available online. Whatever you do, make sure you interact in some way with an instructor to ask questions and to hear the material covered in maybe a different point of view. The third part of your study program, and if the reading was the foundation, this is going to be the keystone, the thing that holds everything together, is to do. You eventually have to roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty in doing as many practice problems as possible. It really doesn't matter how well you understand the material if you can't answer test questions about it correctly. And that's what the QBank is for. The practice exam, the mastery exam, and the Securities Pro QBank are intended to help you gauge how are you doing uh, in your tests. What are your scores going looking like? And how are you doing in actually putting to practice the things that you've learned? Let's talk about some of the primary study tools that are available to you. The first one that I've mentioned already is the LEM, the License Exam Manual. It's a large book that contains all the information that you need to pass your Series 6. D3, I'm sorry, Series 63. The LEM contains a wealth of knowledge, and it's it's not a huge book, but it contain every sentence is written intentionally. The second thing you have is instructor-led training. This is available live in a traditional classroom setting, where an instructor like me would go in and teach you. It's available on demand, and it's also live and on demand. As we go through uh, the instructor-led training, you want to make sure that you pay close attention to the, what the instructor is saying. And this is absolutely true even of an on-demand class. You need to have your class notes available in front of you, which is a notebook that contains all of the same information that the instructor uh, on the screen is going through. Taking the studious notes just as if you were there in person. The Securities Pro Q Bank is available online, and this is for that keystone part of your test preparation, where you can go through and you can build your own quizzes, specifying which units do you want to test yourself on. There's weighted mock exams where you can go through and you can uh, take uh, exams that cover the entire spectrum of the Series 63. As you do that, you're going to receive questions in the same weight as what you would expect to see on the actual test as well. So it's becomes more representative of what you'll see on test day. Diagnostic reports are also available for you to uh, evaluate which units are you struggling with, which units are you doing really well with. As you go through, you want to make sure to review these diagnostic reports and, of course, emphasize your studies on the areas that you tend to be struggling with. The practice and mastery exams are also available for you to uh, find out what your score would be should you take the test today. These are only available one time because they are evaluative tools. If I took the same the practice test a second time, of course I would do a better uh, job on it the second time because I already knew what the questions were. I've been through this before, and that's not what you'll see on test day. Those are all going to be brand new questions to you. Likewise, we want to make sure that the, that the practice exams are going to be unique questions for you where you will have not have seen them before and you can only see them one time to see how you're doing. Let's talk about some of the additional tools you have available. The online interactive study calendar is available for your use. A lot of students have been out of school for a while and they need maybe a little help structuring their studies. 
That's what the interactive study calendar is for. It's to make sure that you stay on track with your studies to review all the information in the time between now and when you take the test. I mentioned before the Comprehensive Class Notes is a book that has all of the information that the instructor is going to go through in your class. Take lots of notes in it. There's lots of margins and lots of white space in there for a reason, so that you have plenty of room to take notes and to jot down any tips that the instructor may bring up. We also have available the exam tips blog and test alerts, the FAQs, and any updates, addendums, and corrections, all available at kfeducation.com. These are intended to make sure you have the most up-to-date information possible in our incredibly dynamic and ever-changing regulatory environment. Sometimes rules change, and sometimes the test changes. We want to make sure that you are always up to speed with what the test is currently talking about. Make sure to check up back frequently on these to find if there's been any updates to it. <clears throat> Let's go through some of these primary tools that are available to you. Starting off with that foundational material, the LEM. Now the LEM is, it contains all of the information that you need to pass your examination. Well, I want you to start with the introduction. That's an area that too many students just skip. They don't think it's pertinent to passing the test, but it is. It talks about all of the prerequisites for the test, the timing of the exam, what the topics covered and the weightings of those topics are going to be in the exam. This is a great resource for you to be able to better focus and structure your studies and know what areas do you sh should you be focusing on. It also includes important test taking tips. The Series 63 is a standardized test, and like any other standardized test, sometimes content isn't the issue, but the way the question is asked is the issue. We need to make sure that you maximize your studies and get the most questions right by not only applying correct concepts, but also having good test-taking skills going into this test. Once you finish the introduction, it's time to get into the meat of the matter, to the actual content of the test. The Series 63 LEM, can, as I mentioned before, contains all that information you'll need to know to pass this test. Well, as you go through, you want to make sure that you carefully study each unit. When I'm writing a LEM, I don't try to write it like a textbook, just relaying information to you, but rather to treat it as a test prep manual, and that's what it is. Something with the sole purpose of helping you get test questions right. So it's not like the kind of textbook you would see in college where they just give you information and say, good luck. Instead, this is very focused and geared towards you passing the Series 63. Everything in there needs to be carefully studied, and that may take several hours per unit to read and comprehend it. As you go through, you're going to see test topic alerts, take notes, and examples. These are areas that the author is really trying to focus you in on to make sure that you see how can these concepts actually be applied in the test. As you go through, you're also going to see quick quizzes and unit tests. The quick quizzes are intended to help you as you go through the manual, make sure that you understand what's being talked about and how these concepts are being applied. You can see these questions being multiple choice, true or false, matching, uh, any variety of ways. Not necessarily the way you would see it on the test, but it's a way that we have found to help you make sure you understand the concepts before you move on to the next section. At the end of each unit, you will find also questions that are structured the same way as what you'd see on the real test for multiple choice questions as you go through, and they may have special modifiers in them, or whatever it is, it's going to be similar to what you would see on the real exam. Make sure to take these quizzes and these tests to maximize your studies to make sure that you're keeping up with what your reading is talking about. Occasionally, there may be areas that you have difficulty understanding just through a reading of the LEM. The video library is available online to help clarify certain issues. Make sure to go online to the kfeducation.com and look through the video library. It's available in the essential and premium packages, and it's a library of short vignettes 
on these more testable or difficult concepts. A great thing with the video library is you can watch them as many times as you want. So if you're still having trouble, go ahead and review it again it may, until you understand what the material is talking about, what is the concept, and the spells start going off in your mind, letting you know, all right, I understand this, I take some questions on it, I move, and I can move on. Now, I mentioned we're in a very dynamic regulatory environment. Every year and every almost every day, rules are changing, and as these rules change, so does the test. Well, we want to make sure that you always have the most up-to-date information possible. And that's where the exam tips blog especially comes into play. Anytime that there is a change in the test, that the students have been giving us feedback that the test is focusing in on different areas, or any time that we know that there is a big change in the exam, we want to make sure that you know that new information as soon as possible. So the exam tips blog is an area where you can go in and you can see what are these new uh, areas being tested on. What are the big changes happening in the test? How does it affect me? And we try to keep this as up to date as possible. We're constantly, our editors are going through and making sure that we know what is happening on the test and how does it apply to you. The test exa exam tips blog is something that you really need to be checking on frequently as uh, and because of that, we have available this RSS, it has an RSS feed. You can subscribe to this feed and just read it on your blog reader as you would anything else, any other news that you happen to read over your morning breakfast. Make sure you subscribe to this so that any new information is automatically pushed to you and you can see it right away and be prepared for your test. Let's talk about for a second the crowning part of your study process, the keystone, the Q Securities Pro QBank. I mentioned previously you, there's no substituting rolling your sleeves up and getting your hands dirty in as many practice problems as possible. This is absolutely vital in your studies. As you go through the LAM, it's important that you continually test yourself on the information. You want to build a comfort level and a confidence in answering questions on the material. Now we're not looking for perfection, especially in the beginning of your studies when you're still reading. Scores that are happening in the high 60s are not bad. Mid to high 60s is a great starting off point, so don't get discouraged with that. You need to you will be going back and reviewing this material later on in your study program. But just as you begin off begin your studies. Don't get discouraged. Just because you're getting in the 60s, you will be building on that. So after each unit, you want to be taking, I would say, at least two 40 questions Securities Pro QBank quizzes, where you go in and you can select, okay, I want to take quizzes just out of unit one. As you do these quizzes, you're going to be reinforcing the concepts, and you're going to be seeing how, is, how can these be applied in a test question environment. After you've done a couple of units, it's important to go back and do cumulative exams. Units one and two, units one through four, or the entire test. You want to make sure that you still remember, even at the end of unit four, what was being talked about in unit one. Now, just a word of advice. Don't become too overwhelmed or overburdened in any one unit. You need to keep moving forward. You need to keep a momentum going. Because if you start repeating, in the same unit over and over and over again, it's going to have a diminishing return. It's not going to be as much of a benefit for you, for you um, as going through and continuing your study process and then taking weighted mock exams at the end of your studies. Now let's talk about these weighted mock exams for a second. You've now gone through all of the LEM. You've been taking quizzes throughout. You've been taking um, cumulative tests throughout, and now you have finished all of your reading of the LEM, you're ready to start your final preparations. What do you do? You need to take the weighted mock exams. These exams are going to be drawing from every uh, unit in the book. It's going to be drawing from everything, and it's going to have weights similar to what you would see on the actual test. So if there's one area that's weighted especially heavily, you can expect to see more of those questions in the weighted mock exam. You want to be completing 
a lot of these, about 10 of these weighted mock exams prior to your class so that you know what areas are you struggling with, which areas are you doing well with, and how can you best prepare for the class? How can you maximize your time with an instructor? And what questions do you need to ask? As you go through in the QBank, there's also available the practice and mastery exams. Now, I mentioned to you previously that these are available only one time because these are for evaluation purposes. You want to find out, how am I doing? Should I te to test today? Well, my personal experience with the practice exam has always been that I've scored on the real test within just a few points of what I scored on the practice exam. And this has happened to me time and time again. I find it to be very representative in both the content and level of difficulty as what you could expect to see on the test. As you finish up your test preparation, it's time for you to really get into that final mode phase. Take those 10 weighted mock exams. Take the practice exam prior to attending your class. When you start taking your class, you need to make sure that you pay careful attention to what your instructor is talking about. I mentioned treat an online exam the same way as you would treat an in-person, I'm sorry, an online class the way you would treat an in-person class. Don't get distracted with Facebook or anything else that's happening on the internet. You want to focus solely on what your instructor is talking about. Have your class notes in front of you and take careful notes on anything that you find especially salient that the instructor says. Make sure to do any of the assignments that are listed in your class notebook or that the instructor may give you. This class should happen roughly seven to ten days prior to taking the real test. And the reason why is because if you have any longer than that, then it's going to have diminishing returns. You're not going to be remembering everything that you learned in the class. Any shorter than that, and you won't have enough time to be able to really wrap up your studies and tie up all the loose ends. So let's talk about those. What do you do in that week between taking your class and taking the exam? Well, this is when you would do something like taking a mastery exam or continuing to have weighted mock exams and QBank quizzes, going through until you are consistently scoring in the 80s. You want to make sure that you have a very large comfort level in these areas. And we're going in the 80s just to build up additional comfort. Of course, the passing score on the real test is a 72. But no one wants to go in shooting for a 72 and getting a 71. We want to make sure, if anything, you score too high on the test. Go back and review your LEM anytime you find areas that you're having difficulty with. I would not suggest necessarily going back and rereading the entire LEM, but going back to certain passages that you're struggling with absolutely can be of benefit to you. Review your notes that you took during class also. You wrote down those notes for a reason. Actually, I can think of two good reasons. One, it allows you to reinforce the concepts while you're taking the class. The second reason, though, is so that you can go back and you can say, yes, this is an area that I think is especially notable, or this is how I can help remember certain concepts. Review those notes uh, as needed during that last week. Finally, you have gone through the whole process, and you are now ready to take your test. Let's talk about the process that we just went through for a second. What was the first thing we did? We read the LEM carefully. The second thing was we went through and we took our class and we asked questions and we may have not had to do that through the instructor link email access. The third thing that we did, and we did this throughout the whole process, was we did. We practiced our questions as much as possible. We went through as much of the QBank as we could and we're continually testing ourselves to make sure that we can apply these concepts in a test environment. So now on test day, let's talk about some of the skills that may be helpful for you as you're going through these test questions. The first one seems trivial, but it's important to note, you need to read the full question. Some of these questions can become quite lengthy. It's important that you read the full question to be able to do a few things. One, so that you can actually know what is the question asking you. 
Occasionally, it may be helpful to read the very last sentence in the question first, just so you can identify what is being asked, so that as you're going through the question, you can pull out the key words and phrases, the information that's actually applicable to the question being asked, because you can expect there to be more information than is needed to answer the question. This distracting information should just be discarded. As you go through this question, you also need to pay careful attention for any hedge clauses, if, not, all, none, and I especially want to uh, emphasize, except. All the following are true, except. We're used to answering questions, the one true answer, and discarding the three false answers. Well, in the case of an except question, it's going to be the exact opposite. You're looking for the one false answer and discarding the three true answers. It's counterintuitive, and it gets too many students wrong answers, even though they knew the concept correctly. It was just a difficultly worded question. Sometimes as you go through the test, you're going to find unfamiliar questions. Going through and taking a look at those key words and phrases may be able to help you identify what exactly is being asked and what answer should I give. Occasionally, however, you'll find that there is no substitute to just memorization, certain key points. Go through and memorize key points that you happen to see in the LEM. Because occasionally that's the best way to be able to answer a question, even if intuition fails you. The, this is not a mathematical test. Um, it's intended to be a conceptual test. However, if you do find any mathematical problems on it, make sure to use the calculator that's provided to you. It's there for a reason, and you don't want to make any careless mistakes on your test. You may be going through a bit of stress on test day, but a calculator is not. Now, one of the bigger things I want to emphasize is to beware of changing answers. You want to make sure that if you change an answer on the test, you are confident that it is you're changing an incorrect answer to the correct answer. Now, I emphasize this because too many students have come back to me and said, Adam, I failed my test. I, I missed it by one, maybe two questions. And one of the questions I always ask off to begin with after I, I commiserate with them is, did you change answers? And how many did you change? And almost universally, they'll admit to changing a significant number. You want to be aware of doing that. Trust your instincts and go with what your first choice was, unless you are absolutely sure you're changing it to the right answer. The last thing I want to mention is to pace yourself. This is a time to test, so you want to make sure you don't go over time. However, it's also not a sprint. There's no extra points for getting it done early. So make sure you give each question its uh, due credit, that you carefully read the question, looking out for any difficult language in there, and answering the question correctly. Pace yourself. As you're going through your quizzes and on the on, in the online QBank, you'll notice that a timer is available to you. Make sure you occasionally look at that just to see how are you doing time-wise. Are you on track with being able to answer all the questions in the time provided on the test? Are you going maybe a little fast and getting answers wrong as a result? Make sure that you understand what you, the pace should be for your test. Going through all of these skills is absolutely going to help you have an edge on your test. So I just want to reemphasize. One last time, the three stages of your study program, because I think they are absolutely vital. First, read. Second, interact with an instructor. Use the instructor link email access. Take careful notes during your class. And the third is to do as many practice problems as possible. Well, I would love to open up the floor for a few questions that you may have, um, and I'll answer as many as I can in the time provided. Please use the question uh, module in your GoToWebinar console, and uh, as I said, I'll go through as many uh, as I can in, uh, in the time provided.
Okay, well, I'd just like to thank everyone again for coming out. This shows that you really do have a, a vested interest in your study program. I highly encourage you to use these skills and join millions of other students like me in passing your test. I would like to note that this information is going to be available online. We're going to be placing it on our YouTube channel. So just go ahead and search for Kaplan Financial on YouTube and you'll be able to see this uh, shortly. Uh, this actually happens to be the recording for the YouTube channel. So please feel free to look it up again and be able to review this information to best prepare for your studies. I wish you all the very best of luck in passing your Series 63, and I wish you a great weekend. Take care.